So at this time, we ask you to please silence all modern electronic devices before we begin. Thank you very much. Welcome to this Trails and Sales celebration of the beauty and heritage of Essex County. The program states that we will bring new life to choral masterpieces from America's colonial period. We feel fortunate to have this opportunity to share this rich, inspiring collection of music from many local composers with you. The music we sing was written predominantly in New England in the late 1700s during the early years of our country. It was taught at singing schools by traveling musicians and often by regional composers. The schools would be held in the evenings over a one or two week period and were a time of social entertainment for the young people in the area. The masters composed tunes, borrowed or wrote verses based on either religious or secular themes, and produced tune books to sell to local audiences. Although this style of music fell out of fashion in the northern cities around 1820, it was still remembered and sung in churches in the rural areas of the north. Singing school music also continued to be popular as it moved westward and toward the southern states. Our first song, Edom, was composed by Elisha West, born in Maine, but later settled in Vermont. He built houses, farmed, and was also a popular singing master. He was known as a fine singer, a patient teacher, and was still remembered by students even after 60 years, and a respected composer. During the winter months, younger students attended the singing school in the afternoons, and older students attended in the evenings. The lyrics are from Isaac Watts, a popular English hymn writer. He was known for his ability to blend the inside of poets and singers with a personal sense of spirituality. The words he sings are also found in a tune entitled Winter, composed by Daniel Reed. But this song is part of a longer piece called Seasons of the Year and found in the section titled Spring. It is a fitting way to begin our praise of the glories of creation and of Essex County. Edom. Thank you. 
Our second song, Harmony, is another composed by Elisha West and is performed as a quartet. It is strikingly different due to its secular tone. Borrowing references from Greek and Roman mythology, it explores themes often used by English poets, those of friendship and love, and suggests different stages, young love and that of a deep abiding friendship found in mature love. Remarkably, and similar to many well-respected singing school composers and teachers, West fell on hard times in his later years. He was placed in the guardianship of a fellow townsman, according to the Vermont Poor Laws, and later moved away from the Woodstock area. Details about his later life, and even the date of his death, remain unknown. Harmony. Was divinely inspired, 
but he further held that the poems should be renovated as if David had been a Christian. For this version of Old 100, Watts used Psalm 23 as his source.
Our third version of Psalm 23 is far more contemporary, written by Marty Haugen in 1986. Mr. Haugen, as the story goes, was raised a Lutheran, but his music was not accepted by that denomination because they were too stern. So he turned to the Catholic Church, reportedly because they liked a good party. And he composed music for them in the 1980s. Hagen was one of the first composers inspired by the use of computers, and he used them both in concerts and workshops. His intention is to move away from the traditional biblical text, not in order to change the meaning of the psalm, but in an attempt to uncover anew the deep and profound truth of God's intimate relationship with us. We, too, we envision the song in the way we are performing it. Julia Elliott will accompany us on the piano, joined by Rowan Elliott Higgins with violin accompaniment. Shepherd me, O oh God.
with election hymn, we return to the work of a local New England composer, Jeremiah Ingalls, born in Massachusetts, who also settled in Vermont after the deaths of both parents. Having learned the trade of a cooper, Jeremiah had also learned how to teach singing. He was well known for his work with the choir of the First Congregational Church in Newbury, Vermont, and travelers would often stay overnight just to hear the singing during services the next day. This chorus was often invited to sing at local events, one of which was a memorial service for George Washington in 1800. The hymn honors three famous patriots, General Joseph Warren, who died at the Battle of Lumber Hill, General Hugh Mercer, bayoneted at the Battle of Princeton Plain, and General Richard Montgomery, who was killed at the ill-fated Battle of Quebec. The last verse honors General George Washington. Engels favored secular tunes and published one tune book, The Christian Harmony. It is suggested that he built his own tavern so that he had a hall in which to teach and sing the secular music, and in which he could hold singing schools without paying rent, in spite of the fact that members of the community had high regard for his music, his tune book did not sell well, and he was later asked to leave the church. He, unlike many of the singing school masters, lived to an old age working as a composer, singing master, cooper, and farmer, and died at the age of 74. Yeah. 
The song, You've Written, is popularly known as Amazing Grace and is originally an Appalachian folk tune. The melody, while thought to be first published in 1831 in the Virginia Harmony, had also been attributed to songs published earlier in the Columbian Harmony and finally in the Southern Harmony four years later, using words familiar to us. In spite of the confusion over the origins of this well-known tune, with its distinctly blues-like style, the words are most often attributed to an event in the life of John Newton. Originally, a less than reputable young man, Newton was forced into the service of the Royal Navy, deserted, and was consigned to service aboard a slave ship. Caught up in a violent storm, he and a crew member were lashed to the ship's pump to avoid being washed overboard. During the storm, he begged for God's mercy. While not immediately giving up the slave trade, Newton began a slow conversion to a religious life. Ordained in 1764, he began to write hymns with the poet, and Amazing Grace was written as part of a sermon for New Year's Day. The power of the song's message grew once it was joined to the tune in Britain. The universal theme of the redemption of God's grace, so passionately expressed, has caused it to cross over to popular secular music. Enjoy our returning the song to its roots in this more traditional performance.
the song Wondrous Love had already been well established in Appalachia long before it was eventually written down. This region had a number of Irish and Scottish immigrants, and those cultures are reflected in the song's haunting text and minor tunes. The popularity of singing grew dramatically in the early 1800s due to the Second Great Awakening, a period when camp meetings and religious evangelism was sweeping our young country. Lyrics were often printed for singing, but because the gathering's participants usually could not read music, they were then sung to a variety of popular melodies. Finally, the words for What Wondrous Love Is This were paired with the tune familiar to us, now and then, as the ballad of Captain Kidd. In 1835, the words and tune were also written down by William Walker and included in the collection of songs mentioned earlier, Southern Harmony, using shape note notation. These well-known lyrics are taken from the biblical verse, John 3.16. The version of the tune we are singing is an arrangement from Alice Parker and Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw, the famous contemporary conductor, favored by Toscanini and the Robert Shaw Chorale, often collaborated with former student Alice Parker on versions of folk songs, hymns, spirituals, and Christmas music. Mr. Shaw was also famous for the quality of engineering that he developed in order to record his chorus. Ms. Parker continues to compose and lead workshops in Western Massachusetts. This particular interpretation of the hymn is unusual with its inclusion of intricate harmonies, intentional dissonances, and droning notes in order to create a haunting mood. It is probably the most difficult selection we have worked on to date but it is also one of the most rewarding.
Our final selection, Jordan, was a favorite of our founder, Len Mayro, and we sing it in honor and in remembrance of him. The words are again by Isaac Watts, but the tune is by William Billings, perhaps the most notable early American composer. Billings was born in Boston in 1746. He was actually a tanner by trade and a friend of Samuel Adams and Pauline Deere, amongst other patriots. Self-taught in music, Billings' tunes were lively and spirited, in direct contrast to the serious tone of the traditional church music. He was a popular singing schoolmaster, published a number of songbooks, and developed a popular, lively, giving style. The song Jordan appeared in the Suffolk Harmony in 1786. Isaac Watts' text reminds us of Moses gazing toward the Promised Land at the end of his life, but it also celebrates the beauties of the English countryside, memories from Watts' youth. In spite of his fame and success as a composer, Billings died in poverty and is buried in an unmarked grave in Boston. We now share one of our favorites.